Hey guys and welcome back. Today we are going to be trying the Ecoline brush pen set. So in this set you get 19 colors and one blender marker which I find to be quite useless but I thought I would give it a go anyway and try these pens out to see if I liked them. So I have taken the liberty of swatching these colors out and seeing how they layer and blend and trying different methods. Can they be re-wetted? Um, this is with the blending marker. I did not like this, like I said before. This is wet and wet. I didn't like that either. And you definitely need to use waterproof pens with these brush pens. Um, so these are the colors that they came with. And as you can see, they were just a little too pigmented for my taste. So I wanted to see if I could do something realistic with them. So I experimented a little bit and tried it with some different ink pens. And this is the Pentel brush pen. I had no problem with that or the Faber-Castell artist pit pens. And I thought that because these colors were so pigmented, it was a little hard to do anything kind of realistic. So I decided to kind of spread the marker out on here and then get my paintbrush wet and see if I could dilute the colors and make them a little bit less saturated so I could work with them. And I'm pretty excited with the results. So let's jump into this. So I decided to go ahead and try these brush pens out in my mixed media sketchbook. Uh, partly because I didn't really know how they would behave on um, regular just watercolor paper and I didn't want to waste a full sheet if I wasn't familiar with how to use them. So I figured the best way to get to know them was to play with them in the sketchbook at first and then move on from there if I liked them. So I went to pixabay.com. I'm also sorry, you guys, I'm getting over a cold. So if I feel, if I sound a little bit out of breath, that is why. But I went to pixabay.com and found a reference of a flower and just began to sketch it out. I wasn't really too particular of making sure it was completely accurate. It's actually a little off, um, but I had a feeling that this piece was going to be coming out a lot more abstract than realistic anyway. Um, so I just went with it and just basically got my hand moving at this point because I, I have been very, very hard on myself lately when something comes out the way that I don't want it to. So I just kind of wanted to give myself the freedom to do what I needed to do today. So um, I forgot to tell you guys why I wanted these markers and okay so I've wanted these since last October. I follow uh, Loish on Instagram and she she used one one of these markers mixed with her ink and her inktobers came out so freaking awesome and I was like oh my god what are those like I need one of those pens in my life so I got a 20 count set just to try out and see if I liked them and stuff like that. But uh, that's why I wanted it. Um, it was because of Loish on Instagram. So if you're not following her, you sh probably should at least check her out because it her Instagram was so freaking awesome last year. Okay, so using these markers on the palette turned out to be pretty cool. I wasn't sure if it would actually work. I've seen a couple artists do this before, uh, mostly with alcohol markers, and they used um, alcohol to actually thin it out. But because these are concentrated watercolor brush pens, I was able to use water it to, to kind of dilute and tone down the color a little bit and actually make the pastels color the pastel colors look pastel. Uh, by using the palette method as well, I was also able to layer a lot more than um, just using the straight markers because there was less pigment on my brush. It, it was able to layer more translucent 
uh, like actual watercolor. So I was happy with that as well. And I do, I do like these brush pens straight out of the, um, the marker as well. It's just for trying to get something that looks a little bit more realistic. Those colors weren't really, um, ideal and the way they layered on top of each other wasn't really similar like it was just too concentrated of a pigment so that's why I went with this uh, method to kind of tone down the colors and see what I actually could make these markers do in general um, and I have to say I really did enjoy them I think I made a couple bad decisions here in this piece but um, it was all experimental and I had to see what they were able to do and not able to do so naturally I uh, decided to push the limits with these markers and I actually made uh, the paper in my sketchbook kind of mad after a while so I did have to stop layering because this isn't it's mixed media paper so it's not watercolor paper so it wasn't like officially like equipped to handle that much water that I was putting on it but um, in general I was very happy with how they blended and once you put the marker on the paper, you can take a wet paintbrush immediately and kind of spread it around and thin it out. And um, you have a lot of options with these pins, which I think is pretty cool because, um, yeah, see, as you can see right now, you can see that I laid down the color from the marker and then went ahead with the paintbrush, like you see me now, and kind of like blended it out a little bit better so it didn't have those harsh, rough edges. So as I mentioned before, I also tested these brushes, these brush pens out with a couple um, of ink pens and the one that I thought was waterproof actually wasn't, but it did work fine with the Faber-Castell pit pens and it did work fine with the Pentel brush pens without smearing it at all. Um, so that is something to note too. So that is probably my next experiment with these. I'm probably going to be doing um, something with just one color and then the black ink just to see how that turns out. I also tested these markers out, or not markers, these brush pens out with gouache mixed in. And because it was concentrated watercolor, the gouache actually worked really well with them. Um, I was actually pretty surprised that the gouache worked with these brush pens, so that was a little bit of a pleasant surprise. These um, also work really nicely in sketchbooks, especially if um, you're doing some quick abstracty stuff like this right here. I mean, it didn't take me too long to do this piece. It was just kind of like a mess around, so um, a lot of experimenting went on in this little itty bitty flower thing that I did in my sketchbook. But I, I do definitely think that these would be a really good option for like a travel case, even if you picked like one or two colors um, or some kind of like analogous color scheme. Uh, I think these would be really interesting to take while you're traveling and whatnot. Um, I actually had a lot of fun and I do plan on adding these um, to my travel case if I do go out and do them. I don't see myself kind of really doing an official piece like a sellable piece for these because um well for one they're not life fast but for two they were um a little harder to work with than regular watercolors so it's you know what I mean like if I bought the Daniel Smith watercolors because they were light fast and easier to use so all in all I think these will be mostly for um, sketchbook exploration and whatnot, but they were a ton of fun to play with. I really enjoyed these brush pens a lot. I'm sorry if this video is a little bit rambly, you guys. I'm trying to like cover all the points and like get it out in one breath and my body is just not cooperating with me. Um, so I am wondering if any of you guys have tried these Ecoline brush pens. If you have, definitely drop me a comment in the comment section and let me know how you like them, if you like them or if you didn't like them. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Oh,